Hello again. Now, in my time, I suppose I must have conducted dozens of Vox Pop interviews. You know, when you accost strangers on the street, microphone in hand, and ask them for their opinion on various topics. I don't think I've ever Vox Popped in Beckenham, but if I did and approached people on the high street and asked them to sum up what they thought Christianity was about, what do you think the response would be? other than, sorry, can't stop, which would probably account for about half of them. What do you think people would say? Of those who did stop, my guess, based on experience, is that 10% would say, oh, I don't know. And most of the rest would come out with something on the lines of Christianity, it's love your neighbour, isn't it? Or do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But the verses we're looking at today remind us that Christianity is so much more than that. At heart, it's not about us and what we do. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. We're in Acts chapter 4, and this is the story so far. A crippled man, a beggar, asks Peter and John for money, just as they're about to go into the temple. Um, Peter says to him, I haven't got any money for you. But I do have this, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And the man is healed and follows Peter and John into the temple precinct, walking and leaping and praising God as the song goes, and attracting quite a crowd who are all going, what? How? Peter is more than happy to tell them. What's happened to the beggar is not down to him and John, he tells them. They couldn't heal anybody, but Jesus can. It's all about Jesus. Jesus who was crucified and who God raised from the dead. Now that sort of talk really puts the wind up the authorities, especially references to resurrection. They didn't like that. And they have Peter and John arrested and jailed overnight. The next day, they're brought before the 71 members of the Sanhedrin, the Supreme Court, and asked, by what power and under whose authority did two uneducated peasants like you, that's the tone of the Greek apparently, by what power and authority did you heal this man? It's pretty intimidating. So how are Peter and John going to respond? Jesus had said in Luke 12, when you are brought before synagogues, rulers and authorities, like now, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at the time what you should say. Well, is that really true in practice? Only one way of finding out. And standing before the very same court that had condemned Jesus to death just a few weeks earlier, and would happily do the same to him, Peter opens his mouth and he goes for it. Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame, and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. That's a quote from one of the Psalms. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. It's all about Jesus. The essence of Christianity isn't being a nice person and a good neighbour. It's about Jesus. Jesus sharing our humanity, demonstrating what God is like and how far we fall short by comparison. Jesus showing how much God loves us, taking the worst that we could throw at him, an agonising execution, and rising above it in his resurrection so that we can know his salvation. It's only thanks to him that anyone can know forgiveness, acceptance and peace with God. Salvation is found in no one else. It's all about Jesus.
May we never forget that. Let's pray. Faithful Lord, living Saviour, in youth and old age, from the womb to the grave, may we know your protection and proclaim your great salvation to the glory of God the Father. Amen.